All right, this is part three. Uh, we're gonna be talking about the least squares method. Uh, we're not gonna actually get into how to do that by hand, uh, but we're going to let our calculator do it for us. Okay, uh, this, the procedure for this is very similar to how we calculated standard deviation using calculator. All right, we're gonna let that do the work. All right, I left our uh, data table up because we're going to need it. By the way, uh, the kind of calculator that we're using is the TI-30X2S. Okay, so this is it. First thing you need to do is you need to clear your memory. Okay, the best way to do that is to hold, hold down the on button and then hit clear and you'll see it says memory clear. Okay, now you're going to hit the second button and then hit data. Okay, it's going to take you a menu that looks like this. We have one var and two var. It stands for one and two variables. You're going to go over and underline two variables. You'll hit enter and it'll kick you back out. Press data again and it will take you to a screen that looks like this. It says X1. Okay, we're going to use our table here. So X1 is going to be 1.5. Okay, X2 will be 2 and so forth. Where we have X8 and Y8. Once we press uh, one, enter 1 1.5, okay. So I've got 1.5 entered there for X1. There we go. Hit the down arrow and you will see Y1. Okay. Default it goes to 1, but we're going to change it to 50. So just type in 50 and then hit down again and it will take you to X2. Do that all the way down. So you're going to have 2 down, 57 down, 25 down, 65, or 2.5 down, 65 down, and so forth. Do that until you get all the way to the end. Okay? Once you've entered all your data, you're going to hit a button that says stat var. Okay? If you press that, you'll see this menu. Now, when we're doing standard deviation and mean, this is the menu we wanted. Okay? But there's more to it than that. Uh, we don't really care about this right now. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to press the left arrow, press a, a few times, and it will take you to this screen where we have A, B, and R. Okay, A is important, B is important, and R is important. Okay, that's what we're trying to find here. So if you look on the calculator and you've entered everything correctly, your A value, okay, when that's underlined, should be 12.6428 and some extra stuff. We're actually going to round that. I'm going to use approximately 12.6. Okay, now if I go underline B, you'll see it's 32.0357 and so forth. Okay, we're just going to round that to 32. Okay. Now R, as you can see, is 0 0.99865 and change. Okay. Now I don't want to really call this one, and I'll tell you why shortly. So I'm going to round it to 0.999. Okay, I want to leave some room before I hit 1. Now, what do these numbers mean? Well, A represents the slope. B represents my y-intercept. Okay, so with these two things, I can come up with an equation of a line. So if I put these together, I get this equation. Okay, this is another equation for a line of best fit. This is just using the least squares method. Okay, that's what the calculator defaults to. We've already looked at one using eyeballing and the median median line. All right, this is a third way to do it. And in a second, we're going to compare them. But first, I want to pay attention to what this is. R is uh, the value of it. We've given nine point nine nine nine. Okay, this is the correlation coefficient. All 
right what the correlation coefficient tells me is tells me two things number one because it's positive it tells me that my slope is positive the slope of the line that i'm creating is positive and sure enough it is ok the second thing that tell that it tells me and this is uh, more important is how close that my data set comes to landing on that line ok now since this is very very close to one that means that I have a very, very strong positive correlation. So all these points are almost touching that line. They're just not quite there. If it were one exactly, and this is why I didn't want to round up to one. Okay, if it were one exactly, that would mean that all the points are on that line. But if you go back and look at our graph, you'll see that they're not. Okay, so, uh, so I have to leave some room uh, for error. All right, so this is very, very close to one. As a great sign. That means that I should end up with three equations that are pretty close, okay, no matter what method I used, even with the human error involved with eyeball. Okay? So I'm done now with my table. And I'm done really with everything else except my equations. The first one we used first method we used was eyeball. Okay? Now the equation we came up with, I'm actually going to change this to f of x instead of y because I want to use function notation here. The function was actually 13x plus 30.5. Okay, that was the first one we used. The second one, which was the median median line, again I'm using f of x. That equation was 12.8x plus 31.6. This is the third one. This is what we just came up with. It's the least squares method. And I'm going to also change it to function notation as well. Okay, so I have my three equations. Now, going back to our study guide, Okay, the question uh, on problem number six says, predict the interval between geysers for a duration of six minutes. Now remember our uh, duration was our x column. So we're going to plug in six for x. I'm going to do that for all three of my methods, you know, just to compare my results. Okay? You don't have to do it this way, it just depends on what the question asks you to do. So when I plug in 6 here, 13 times 6 plus 30.5. Down here it's 12.8 times 6 plus 31.6. Here it's 12.6 times 6 plus 32. Okay? Now it's just a matter of doing the calculations. Okay, this ends up <coughs> uh, coming down to 78 plus 30.5, which gives me a total of 108.5. Now I have to give it context, okay? According to the question, it's asking for the number of minutes in between eruptions. And so we have to use our, uh, our units here, and we're using minutes in, in the context of this problem, okay? Move on to the next one. And I get 76.8 plus 31.6 giving me a total of 108.4 minutes. Alright? Then my last one, 
which is the one I used the calculator to find. I get 75.6 plus 32, giving me a total of 107.6 minutes. Okay, so as you can see, my results are pretty close. Okay, I go from 108.5 using the eyeballing method, 108.4 using median median line, and then 107.6 using the least squares method. All three are within one minute of each other. Now the reason for that is again R, our correlation coefficient. Which was 0 0.999. That tells me that the data are very, very close to the lines that we're going to find. And if that's the case, then all three of my equations should end up being very, very close. And they are. So, uh, so there you go. That's how you use all three methods. Okay, you've got to use these to make predictions, make decisions, because all this is just numbers unless you can use them for something. Okay? So, it's all three methods. And hopefully now you've got a little bit better grasp on linear regression.